Hey everyone! Thank you so much for checking out my video and welcome! This is the second video in my outlining series. It's also the last one. Um, so it's only going to be a two, kind of a two part of this month. Um, so yesterday I went over the outlining video for plotting. So specifically I went over um, kind of plotting and, and how to plot out your certain points in your story. And also I went over the emotional arc that, that you can plot out for your story. Now we're getting into the weeds. This is going to be on scene, specifically how to um, help you outline and construct a scene. Um, a lot of this video, the first half of it, is going to be really, really dry stuff, so it's not going to be um, anything that fascinating. The second half is where is basically where a lot of the you know the kind of the core things you're going to take away will come from. So. When it comes to outlining, there's a couple quick things. So what is a scene? Obviously a place where a fictional event occurs, a sequence of continual action. Just for those that aren't aware, uh, may not know what a scene is. Um, elements of a scene. Again, for people that are that are more experienced writers, really basic things. Description, dialogue, and pacing. That's what basically comprises um, the elements basically of a scene, right? Yes, there are more than that. Yes, there is, you know, obviously, the, um, like, you know, dialogue, internal dialogue. There is um, narrative summary. There are other things that kind of make up, you know, the, the, the prose of a scene. But for the simplicity of it, description, dialogue, pacing, I think, tends to work well to sort of get across the idea um, so of what, what, you know, takes place in a scene. So all that very boring, probably stuff you may already know. So let's get right through that. Now we're into what must a scene do. So when it comes to a scene, there has to be th one of three things involved. It needs to either um, move the plot forward, it needs to develop character, or it needs to help build the world. Ideally, it should do all three. And the, A great scene does all three. A good scene does two of these things. Um, and a basic bare bones scene needs to do, at least do one of them. Um, so keep that in mind, but plot, character, world building needs to be one of those three at least, if not all. Now, when it comes to actually constructing your scene, right, so when you actually go through and construct these things, there's a cause and effect to it. In other words, um, some sort of conflict or challenge is introduced in the scene, which is the cause, and the effect is the protagonist's response to the conflict or the challenge. This is what you need to do when you construct your scenes. When, when, when you have these sort of plotted points out on, on your outline there, when you start kind of coming up with individual ways to outline it um, or outline the specific scenes, understand the idea of cause and effect. Understand that you need to have some sort of conflict introduced in the story. There has to be some sort of conflict in the actual scene, and there needs to be an effect from that conflict. So just, just kind of come to understand that that is basically required to, to make a scene. Now... The way I outline my scenes, and, and this is the the part that you're probably going to take away, this is the thing that you're going to take, I, I think, the most away from, is um, what I call my scene card. What it is, it's an actual index card. So just take basically an index card for each scene that you want to write. And each one, I basically outline them like this. So I take the note card, I put down what the scene number is, I do a quick like one-sentence summary of what the scene is about, um, I do a, a basically write down what what plot like, like like how this affects the main plot. I write down um, if it has any sort of anything to do with the subplot of the story. Then on the left side, I put down the cause and effect that happens in the story. So a quick thing to write down. And on the right side, I I put a little note saying plot, character, world building, and I will highlight or check off like which ones are are, are basically satisfied in this particular scene. I'm gonna go through in a second. I'm gonna show an example here on the, on the next slide, but. Again, this is something that I would encourage you to take away. If you're going to take anything away from this, this this presentation, this is it. And this is really the core thing that you should try and take away um, is being able to do these sort of scene cards the way I've listed them out because I think it'll help you a whole lot. So um, here's an example. All right, I just made this up. This is just something I came off the top of my head here um, for an example. So um, scene number one, right? So I'm doing a, a, we'll call it a psychological thriller story okay um so summary of the scene right john doe a reporter is tasked with investigating a series of murders um for a national newspaper okay what's the plot reporter plot line is established right he's going to be investigating the series of murders that's the plot subplot right so what's going to be discussed in the scene is subplot is introducing john doe's unresolved fear over the loss of his parents and the trauma he experienced in his childhood 
okay? That is just a quick note for you. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this context that I'm telling you the first time. If you are writing it out, obviously you're gonna know what this means. That's why you can kind of keep it shorthand. So we get into the cause and effect, all right? John's boss calls John into the office, tells him a series of suspicious murders have been occurring in Upper Maine. And sensing a chance to do an embedded piece, I spelled piece wrong, <laughs> spelled piece wrong, so, um, do an embedded piece on a small on small town life and the effects of murder on the, on the townsfolk, he tasks John with the investigation. All right, so that is the cause. The effect. Um, after some negotiating, John reluctantly agrees to the assignment. What he doesn't tell his boss is that he's from the area and his parents were murdered in, in a similar way as these current victims. The killer was believed to have been caught and was executed, although the killer denied it was him. All right, you can see where this story is going. <laughs> What's the second effect? The assignment stirs up a sense of unease in John, the subplot, right? So this ties back into John's unresolved fears, um, you know, loss of his parents, right? Ties back into that. So you see the cause. Assignment's given, effect is he takes the assignment, but there's a deeper thing involved with it, um, especially with the subplot there, okay? This satisfies the plot, the character, and the world building, right? You get the plot laid out, you get, you get a sense of who the character is, um, and, and a little bit of the trauma, basically, um, in the scene, and you also get a little bit of world building, right? It takes place in modern America, so it's like, it's not a whole lot of world building that, 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 that's really necessary, but you get a little bit of that, that sense. Um, and the last thing I do on these scene cards here is I do a little thing where I put down a reminder of what they want and what they really want. So on these cards, you got to get it like, like it, it's, it takes a while to do it, but a constant reminder though of what they want, right? And what they really want in each scene is really important to understand your character. So if we go back to the assignment from last month on the outline of the protagonist series, putting that in each scene card can be very, very helpful. In this case, um, you know, what the protagonist wants is they want to complete their assignment and potentially win an award for their uh, embedded story that they're doing for the newspaper. What do they really want? Well, closure for the trauma they experience at the death of their parents. Okay. Again, really simple. Again, this is, this is the kind of trope you've seen, I'm sure, in plenty of, of you know, plenty of thriller stories, plenty of thrillers, you know. But that's basically what the, you know, the, again, if you gave me five minutes to come up with something like this, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is what you get. But, again, this is a good scene. Like, this is, in effect, basically outlines, you know, it sets up basically what the plot line is. It sets up, um, you, you know, the characters, um, both what they want and also sets up the, the subplot of what they really deep down want. All of it is addressed in this, you know, at least in this one particular scene. It, it's kept to that. So it's a solid scene. It's a solid working scene to begin a story. And so... If you do this, if you take the same kind of concept in, in for your little note cards there, right, and do each scene like this, you'll find that the scenes you write tend to be cohesive. They tend to work together, not just in terms of plot, but they tend to also stay connected to the main ideas, which is what your character wants and what they really deep down want. And so it's a very easy way to track it, and it keeps you on pace. You, it's, you can look at it and you can go, well, how does this tie into this? I don't, you know, you might ask yourself, um, you know, this one scene, I really like it, but it doesn't address any of this stuff. Well, is it necessary? Is that scene something you want to go in and write? And you might be bullheaded, much like I am at times, and you might go through and still might write it, and you might realize, oh, that was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. Um, it doesn't help. I gotta, now i got to take it out. But it can be helpful. This process can be very, very effective, I think, for people Um to sort of get their scenes to be cohesive, to get them to work together, to make to have them make sense. And really, this is kind of the last step in the outline process. At least for myself, this is pretty much where the outline process ends, where the writing begins. Um, once I have a scene, like once I know what I have to do and what things I have to have, right? So I have to have a scene where he gets an assignment from his boss and he accepts an assignment. And I have to give a little bit of backstory on what's going on with these murders here, just as an example. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to sit the, sit the computer and ready to start typing this out. Like, I, I think for most people, most writers, I think you can see this. I think you can see that, um, you know, basically how you could craft a scene around this, how you could actually physically write this if you had this much detail um, to go into it. Yeah. Um, and again, the, the, these are not stories that, that require a whole lot of additional knowledge in that, like, it, it's, there's no um, learning curve with the story. There's no, there's no, um, like, world building. There's not a whole lot of um, elements where you have to showcase certain things. If you're writing, like, sci-fi or fantasy, 
you may want to take these, the, just an example, these scene cards here. And you may want to include that whole section of world building I have right there. You may actually want to include, like check off, write down, you know, what world building elements have you shown because the learning curve is going to be so high for, for people that are reading this for the first time. You come in reading this, you're going to know exactly what's going on just because you live in, in the same world where this, this, this story takes place, this fictional tale takes place. Um, and so just something to keep in mind. Um, you do want to try and, and keep the same structure um, for each scene of your outline. So again, use the same sample card. Um, try and do this for every single scene. I've mentioned before in last week's video, but you don't have to do this linearly. This does not need to be some linear process where you can start, um, you know, you have to start at the beginning and go all the way to the end. You can start broad. You can know a few big scenes, right? You know, write those, outline those first, and then work backwards. Work you know, kind of from the points that either come afterwards or before it to kind of connect this, to sort of bridge them in between. There's going to be gaps. There are going to be gaps in your story, in your outline. That's simply, it kind of, again, I think it's inevitable. I think it's absolutely inevitable that you're going to be able to get this the first couple passes. There's going to be gaps. It takes time. The process takes time to come up with these ideas. And again, it's not something that you, you, can, you can just write your way towards. It requires a lot of patience, a lot of, it's very, very zen. It's very, you know, it's very sort of like woo-woo, you know, new age. But you have to kind of let this thing come to you. You have to sort of sit there, let your brain figure it out, and have these sort of scenes come to you um, in, in kind of an organic way. It's difficult because I'm doing a video here, an instruction, you know, a video, video for you all to kind of show you how to do this. And it's difficult for me to tell you, hey, follow this, but understand this is not the whole process here. There is a part of just, you know, kind of listening to yourself. There's a part of trusting your instincts. There's a part of letting your brain kind of figure out some of the smaller parts of this. So it's difficult for me to give you something that's maybe will get you, you know, halfway, 75% of the way, maybe there and telling you the other 50, 25%, whatever it might be, just comes with time. But unfortunately, that's the writing process. I find for myself, there's no, like, there's no real concrete way to write you know, an amazing best-selling book. If there was, we'd all be doing it, right? If someone knew the exact way to write, you know what I mean? Like the exact way with scene by scene, how to come up with the exact scene by scenes, we'd all be on the New York Times bestseller list. We aren't. Um, so again, some of it takes time. Some of it takes just being able to read other people's works or watch other movies and sort of see how those scenes are constructed to see, you know, how those middle scenes, the scenes that, that, that need to gap the bigger ones to see how those are constructed and what those make up. It takes time. It takes intuition. And it just takes, again, you being willing to sort of step back from from this need to constantly be writing, to constantly be working through this problem, and just take a step back. Um, and honestly, this is probably the only time in the process where you get a chance to take a break. Like the outlining process is probably the only time where you get to have this kind of nice, relaxing sort of vibe to it. Because once you're writing, I mean, you know, at least for me, and you know, I think for a lot of people. It tends to be like, write, 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 write. You know, my, I have my vlog, you know, write every day. So the outlining process is the one time where it tends to be kind of nicer and relaxing. You have to sort of listen to your thoughts a little bit. Embrace it. It doesn't last very long. And once it's gone, you've got, you know, months, years, you know, of writing <laughs> pretty consistently here with very little, like, time to relax and to sort of, you know, think about how you could have plotted this thing. Um, and so... Just something to be aware of, just again, reiterating that it, it takes time. This process will take you time. With that being said, that's it. That, that's the end of this video here. Um, if you are following along with this story, with this live in, in, you know, in 2022 in October, hey, NaNoWriMo is in about two weeks. So you get two weeks basically to potentially start outlining your scenes and start jumping into NaNoWriMo. It can be done, you know, 14 days, two weeks. That's not a an awful time frame to start getting outline done. Um, and so with that, if you are looking to do nano, I, I would encourage you to use this process to get at least your, your initial outline done. Um, often say outlining is the best process, to, you know, to get your writing to avoid, <laughs> to avoid any of those long-term challenges, right? You know, you know, if you don't want to spend a lot of time revising your story and going through and making countless revisions, outline really well the first time and you can save yourself a whole lot of headaches um, but that is it that is it for this video that is it for this series again two videos very short um, I will be back 
here again, um, obviously with another set of series uh, of videos on a different writing topic, but I do hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have any kind of questions on any of this, let me know, leave it in the comments, I can get back to you. All right, well, thank you so much.